Hi guys, bringing you another video today on another set of 9058 pattern web equipment. I know this is right in the wake of having just done a video on the 9075 pattern trials equipment, so it's two web equipment videos in a row, but I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Uh, first of all, it details the most common uh, components to find of 9058 pattern, and those which we used from the the, the, the components that are mentioned here, uh, the, primarily the ammunition pouches, seem to have been issued from the mid-1970s or the early 1970s onwards. I can't find an exact date. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The, another reason for, for wanting to do this video is there's been some confusion uh, on my previous videos in, where I give a date range of mid-1960s to mid-1970s for the second issue equipment. And of course, some people have misinterpreted that 90, I'm saying 1958 pan ended issue in the mid-1970s, which of course it didn't. Uh, it was issued right through into the mid-1990s. So this is to clear up some confusion on that. And also I would stress at the, at, the, at the outset here that the date ranges I've given in these videos are for typical frontline use. You see images from the mid-1970s, certainly. Frontline infantry seem to have had the bigger ammunition pouches and so on, which is not to say all did, and it's not to say that all earlier components weren't on issue because for the army a pouch is a pouch or a you know, poncho roll is a poncho roll, etc. So these dates aren't definitive, they're just to give an idea of when the items were most commonly issued. And certainly there are photographs I've seen from the 1980s, um, a chap in the Royal Corps of Transport directing, a, uh, directing traffic, and he has a Sterling submachine gun and he's carrying a Mark I, uh, Mark I a first issue 1958 pattern ammunition pouch. Um, at that late date. So again, these dates aren't completely definitive, definitive, they're just to give an idea of when the components were most commonly issued. So that all said, moving on to look at the web equipment now, the first thing I'll do as I normally do is to get rid of the pack. And the reason for that is we won't actually look at this in this video. I'll direct you, I'll put a, a card up in the top right um, directing you to the second issue, the video on the second issue 1958 pattern. This is the second issue pack and it didn't change again throughout its, its issue life. So this essentially is exactly the same as the one looked at in the second issue video, so I'll get rid of this to the side and we won't talk about it today because it would be redundant. If you're interested, go and have a look at the, uh, the second issue video and it'll give you some details there. So we'll move that out of the way. So what we have here is all the later issue components. We've got the second issue uh, poncho roll, uh, which has the riveted tip on the uh, strap there. And as previously shown, it has three loops for adjustment uh, for the quick release adjustment fastening um, for the different size of roll rather than two on the first issue. The yoke is also the second issue. The belt, something I'll also bring up in this video, I previously stated that the belt didn't change, which is an error on my part, and I apologize for that. I'll put a link in the description to Khaki Web. What happened with the belt was the belt actually changed the lengths for the different sizes actually changed um, during manufacture so the belt didn't stay the same all the way through its life the length changed depending on what size you you uh, were issued so uh, it, i'll put a link in the description to khaki web's website and they have details on when that changed and the exact number of the you know the exact measurement uh, that the belt changed between during its life so as i say second issue ponce roll second issue um yoke we now have the second issue uh, water bottle carrier, water bottle pouch, which has the strap with riveted tip rather than the turn lock on the flap. Also made slightly more voluminous, so as it will it will carry, will fairly easily carry the cup and the bottle, whereas the earlier pattern was a bit of a tight fit. One thing to note is that when worn with the respirator haversack, um, the water bottle tended to be moved next to the left hand ammunition pouch and the haversack worn on the right. And this is shown in the 1990, I think, fitting instructions, certainly shown in photographs through the 70s and 80s. The third issue components here are the ammunition pouches and the kidney pouches. The ammunition pouches were made deeper. Now, you'll see if you watch the second issue, uh, the video on second issue 1958 pattern or on first issue, that the pouches, the width of the loops or the depth of the loops for the, the bayonet frog, this is essentially it's, it's been widened by another magazine's width and these are still obviously the same height as the previous pouches which is to allow for the magazines for the L4 light machine gun.
but they're now deeper, so they've increased magazine capacity. They're also angled, which we'll have a look at once I turn the web set over. Um, and as I say, these are the most common, you find these very commonly, they're the most common ammunition pouches to find. They're very, very plentiful. You can pick them up very cheaply it's, uh, on uh, stores at shows and things like this. Try and find ones that are dated would be my advice. Um, try and find them with, with clearly printed dates. I believe these two are both 1977 dated. Uh, the rear pouches, as I said, the, the kidney pouches are also the third issue, and they differ from previous issues. They don't have the stiffener in the side of the lid, just as the second issue don't, but the main difference with these is on the back. And this is where I explain the re-upload. Um, I apologise as there, were, there was an error with how the uh, web set was set up in the original upload, which I've corrected. Um, thank, you for Ch thank you to Chaz T for pointing that out. Um, decided to re-upload the videos. I don't want to... Uh, provide an inaccurate reference, a knowingly inaccurate reference, just because I rushed essentially in to get the video out. And this is now assembled according to the 1965 uh, fitting instructions. Uh, also, there were a couple of omissions, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so you can see from the back here, it's a little difficult to see that the am ammunition pouches are actually angled. Um, the, the hooks on the back mean that they're angled back away from the hips uh, and away from the, the legs, which obviously makes it a lot easier to wear the set when sitting down uh, in the back of an armoured personnel carrier, for example. N another thing to note about the larger ammunition pouches, the larger third issue ammunition pouches here, um, is that they don't have the pull tab, the um, webbing strap inside them to raise the magazines as the earlier two types do. The major difference with the kidney pouches, which you can see here, is that they attach to the uh, upright straps on the back of the yoke. Now the original ones don't have the original two types, the first issue and second issue don't have this um, and uh, consequently they sag because so much of the pouch sits above the belt um, and therefore they don't provide, as part of the design, they don't provide any support for the pack which is badly enough supported as it is by just hooking onto the yoke. Um, so the, uh, that was a major design flaw and was rectified with these, the third issue. Now something to note about the dates of the components here is the third issue um, kidney pouches are shown in the 1965 fitting instructions. However, the third issue ammunition pouches aren't. So this is correct for 1965. They were certainly in use by then, they're shown in the fitting instructions. The ammunition pouches aren't. They, as I said, uh, I think I say elsewhere in the video, believed to be introduced in the early or mid 1970s. So that's a look at the back of the equipment, um, just to show you the details there of what had changed. And now the properly attached kidney pouches, which was in error in the first uh, vid first upload of this video. As I say, rushing to do videos in between uni work is not the best way to do things and uh, lesson learned. So arguably 958 pattern was in service longer than it should have been. Um, and the, the trial nylon version of it was penciled in for introduction, which as I say, I'll do another video on that at some point in the future. I'd like to get a few more components of it and complete the set a bit further before before I do that. But um, as I say, <laughs> that was penciled in for introduction. It wasn't. So the British Army was still issuing cotton web equipment much longer than it really should have done. Um, the disadvantages of this, of course, are for an NBC environment, as I mentioned in the 75 pattern video. And also, from the point of view, it does get a lot heavier when it's wet um, than nylon equipment does. Nylon equipment sheds water far more easily. So, as I say, it, it soldiers on, uh, pardon the pun, and um, it defines, as I say, right the way through the Cold War. This was the, the majority of the Cold War. This was the um, equipment that the British Army used. So quite iconic in that regard. And as, as is well known, it, it did inspire um, other countries, Portugal, um, Eastern Bloc countries, the East German experimental UTV equipment and so on, was inspired by the 1958 pattern equipment, uh, with the pull tabs and the, the belt design and the yoke design and so on. So quite an influential set of equipment in that regard as well. So that's the, the third issue and certainly the most common set uh, you'll find and uh, the most commonly issued set of 1958 pattern. Um, obviously the, the type that was used during the Falklands War as well, so interesting from that point of view. So I hope you found that interesting, as I always say, and I'll have to have a think about what I'm going to do for the next video. But until then, bye for now.